In January of 2023, a high school teacher was seriously wounded when one of her students, a six-year-old boy, brought a weapon to class. This provoked outrage, debate, and controversy, bringing forth a conversation about where the blame should really lie. This is a video that's going to be controversial for a number of reasons. One thing I think we can all agree on, though, is that ideally a six-year-old shouldn't have a loaded gun. Unfortunately, a lot of parents out there aren't really the most present or vigilant leading to today's incident. Let's start at the beginning by introducing this woman. Abigail Zwerner was a 25-year-old elementary school teacher working at Richneck Elementary School out in Newport, Virginia. The Newport school system had just recently been shaken by an outbreak of violent incidents, two of which involved firearms. In September of 2021, a 16-year-old at Heritage High School fired a few shots during lunch, going on to injure two 17-year-olds in the process. This teen ended up with a 10-year prison sentence. Then, less than two months later, an 18-year-old student named Damari Batten pulled out a gun in the parking lot of Minchville High School. He ended the life of a 17-year-old student named Justice Dunham after a football match against a rival high school within the same school system. Needless to say, the community was shaken. Everyone was on high alert, including Abigail Zwerner. In fact, despite teaching very young children herself, there was one student in her class that was constantly raising red flags. This student, only six years old, already had multiple incidents on his record. He had cursed at the school staff, whipped some other kids with his belt, and even choked out a teacher. In the choking incident at his previous school, the student came up behind a teacher, locked his arms around her neck, and attempted to pull her back downward. After this, he was moved out to his new school, Richneck. At this new school, he started one incident after another. By this point, he had been placed into an alternative schedule after threatening other kids on the playground during recess. This student ended up in Abigail's class and immediately began to terrorize her. A week prior to today's incident, he had taken the teacher's phone, slammed it down on the ground, and broken it. This got him into a short suspension. The next week, unfortunately, he was back in her class once again. On his first day back in school, many of the school staff, including Abby herself, reported to administration that, for one, not only was he still being extremely unruly, but two, he also might have a weapon on him. At around 11.15 a.m. on January 6, 2023, Abby first alerted school staff that this child had threatened to harm both her and another student. At 12.30 p.m., another teacher went to the administration and said that she had taken it upon herself to search his bag. Then again, at 1 p.m., a third teacher notified the administration that this boy had pulled a gun from his backpack, showed it to another student, and threatened to shoot him if he told anyone about it. This teacher was told to, quote, wait it out, being told that school was almost over anyway. In the meantime, another teacher spoke up and was denied permission to even search the child's bag for the weapon in the first place. Abby, understandably stressed out, had texted one of her associates that she believed that one of her students had a gun in class and that the administration was refusing to do anything about it. Then, at around 2 p.m. during a regular lesson, the inevitable happened. During class, while finishing up on some reading, the student randomly pulled the gun from his bag and revealed it to the rest of the class. Abby attempted to de-escalate the situation and confiscate the weapon from the boy. He pointed it towards his teacher, a 9mm Taurus pistol. Abby calmly reached toward the boy in an attempt to take the weapon before he could actually use it. That's when he fired the shot. The shot went straight through Abby's hand, breaking many of the bones and continued into her abdomen, critically injuring her. Despite the life-threatening injury, she held the student back and told the others to run. She then escorted the other students out of the classroom and away from the assailant while another staff member took control and restrained him. Abby's students took shelter in another classroom as the school went into lockdown. Surveillance footage from the school shows that she was the last to leave the classroom, actually. Then, struggling to breathe, she passed out. It wasn't too long before the police, along with some ambulances, rolled up to the school. They determined pretty early on that the shooting was indeed intentional and that no struggle seemed to have taken place before the shot was fired. It seemed that there wasn't even much warning beforehand that the whole ordeal was over and done pretty quickly. It seemed that the child had gotten the gun from his mother, bringing it to school in his backpack. At first, it was believed that the mother owned the gun legally. At first. Abby's injuries were life-threatening, but luckily her condition improved greatly as she spent time in the hospital. Eventually, she was listed as being in stable condition. 
She was released a few weeks later in mid-January. This incident was the first of its kind in the U.S. in 2023, but it was notably the third in that one single school district in only 17 months. Nationwide, it was the 16th incident featuring an assailant of 10 years or younger since 1970. Richneck Elementary did have metal detectors and systems in place in order to prevent an incident like this, but it seems like they were only used to screen students at random and weren't in regular use. While being arrested, the six-year-old student was, what they called, combative with the employee who restrained him, striking him at least once. The police put him into a cruiser and took him in. While investigating, they found a spent shell casing, a cell phone, his backpack, and a gun to be taken in as evidence. A judge was tasked with finding out what to do with the student next. Immediately following his escort from the school, he was placed into a medical facility once the police were able to get an emergency custody order. Because of his age, his identity was never officially revealed. The police revealed that the school had never actually alerted them about any of the tips that the student might have been dangerous before the incident took place. They later found out that the school administration had been tipped off multiple times and had refused to act. It was highly unlikely that a child so young could be prosecuted for the crime in any way. The police, though, felt that somebody needed to be held accountable. The most likely person in this case would be the kid's mother, who he got the weapon from in the first place. This led them to the home of 25-year-old Deja Taylor, the mother. In the home, they found drugs and related paraphernalia. They didn't find any sort of lockbox or trigger key that might have responsibly stored a firearm. It's unclear how the kid got access to the gun, but it appears that it wasn't really that hard. Under local law, even having a loaded gun where it's accessible to a minor under the age of 14 is a misdemeanor in itself. The police originally continued working under the assumption that she had purchased the gun legally, but they found that this was not the case. She had made false claims on the transaction form when she purchased the gun. Namely, the section where the form asks if you're on any sort of drug. She had lied on that part. It's easy to see why this incident quickly sparked debate across the country about everything from the responsibility of young children committing violent crimes, gun control, responsible gun ownership, the legal responsibility of a parent in this sort of situation, you name it. Many people out there demonize the child for already being so violent at such a young age, while many others call for compassion and villainize the parents. A lot of people held a good middle ground between the two opinions. This wouldn't go on to be the only incident of its kind in Virginia this year. Just one month later, on February 16th, another six-year-old, a little girl, took a gun to class and threatened to shoot another little girl with it. This student's mother was charged with one, contributing to the delinquency of a minor, and two, allowing access to a loaded firearm by children. On April 13th, Deja Taylor turned herself in at the Newport News City Jail for warrants related to this incident. She was charged with felony child neglect and misdemeanor recklessly leaving a loaded firearm to endanger a child. For these charges, she could face up to six years in prison. The school principal, Brianna Foster Newton, left the position shortly after the school reopened following the incident. The assistant principal, Dr. Ebony Parker, resigned willingly before school even came back into session. The superintendent, George Parker III, was voted out by February 1st. The school reopened with more strict safety measures in place. They hired two new security officers, installed two more metal detectors, added doors to previously wide open areas, and gave clear backpacks to all the children. After Abby Zorner herself recovered, she resigned in June. Abby's attorney revealed that they intended to file a lawsuit against the school after the administration failed time and time again to respond to the very real concerns that this student was a danger and that he possessed a weapon. They started litigation against not only the school board, but also against the three school district officials who resigned, looking for $40 million in total. The lawyers for the school district attempted to dismiss the lawsuit, saying that she was allowed to receive workers' comp. When this wasn't working, they said that she wasn't even their employee since she had resigned, neglecting the fact that she resigned well after this incident took place. The parents of the six-year-old assailant released a statement through their attorney saying that they believed that their child had an undisclosed acute disability. It was later revealed that he had been diagnosed with ADHD. In June of 2023, Deja Taylor was charged in federal court for making a false statement while purchasing her gun and for using marijuana while in possession of a handgun. Her lawyer asserted that she was going to plead guilty as part of a plea. Then she did just that. 
With all of her charges together, she's looking at a maximum of 25 years in prison. However, the prosecutors have stated that they will likely recommend a sentence of 18 to 24 months. Her sentencing will take place in October. Abby Zorner, having left her career as a teacher behind, still struggles with the memory of the incident. Not only does she have the betrayal of her former employers weighing on her mind, but she also has the trauma of nearly losing her life to one of her own students, a child of only six years old. She said, Some days are not so good days where I can't get up out of bed. Some days are better than others where I'm able to get out of bed and make it to my appointments. But, you know, for going through what I've gone through, I try to stay positive. You know, try to have a positive outlook on what's happened and where my future's heading. Once again, thank you for watching my video. I have a feeling that this is going to be one of the more controversial videos in the end, given, you know, what it entails. If you don't mind, go ahead and give the video a like, it really helps me out in the algorithm, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Go ahead and follow me on social media if you want, you never know what'll happen to a channel like this, I always keep those down in the description. If you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I always keep linked down in the description below, and speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. We've got Tracy Farrell, Jada, Dana Hart, Anna B, Sunrider, Gabrielle Tansik, Lee aka Crust, Amelia Morales, George Lopez, Mini Tina, Ron Murillo, Travis Billings, Lettuce, Jason Whitehurst, Lord Fool, Jimmy Dowell, Kimmy Leffel, Melina Lee Williams Haas, Impalato, Stephen Jamie Kramer, Max Swordguy, Rain Noir, Pao Yang, April Diamond, Starfade, Astral, Angie, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Sass Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, Buttery Frankus, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Adrian Lawley, Marsh, Rinsenstein, Kim Peek, Lex Luthor, Lux Alpaca, CSD, Scoochie Maine, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You are all compiling a list of ever-growingly cool people. This has been your host Kyle, thank you, and good night.